This video is designed to provide an advanced overview of the configuration options available in DeepFreeze, as well as explain how to modify the configuration of DeepFreeze on a computer that already has the DeepFreeze software installed on it. As we can see, I've got one computer reporting into my enterprise console with the DeepFreeze demo configuration that we can also see over here under the list of available configurations. For the purposes of explaining and providing an overview for the advanced configuration options, what we'll do is we'll create a brand new configuration within the console, and then I'll show you how we can update the configuration that already exists on the system with the new configuration that we're going to create. Simply right click on Deep Freeze and select the Add Configuration option. The configuration of Deep Freeze Enterprise takes place across six different tabs within the configuration interface. On the very first tab, we have the ability to create passwords. Now, we can create two different types of passwords within DeepFreeze Enterprise. The workstation password provides an easy way for you to manage the current state of DeepFreeze when working directly with a computer that has DeepFreeze installed. As an example, if you didn't have access to the console and you needed to make permanent changes to the computer that you were working on, this workstation password gives you the ability to restart systems into a thawed state, restart them into a frozen state, etc. In addition, we provide the ability to create a command line password. One of the things that we install on each and every computer we install DeepFreeze Enterprise on is a command line utility. This command line utility can be very handy in environments where a third-party desktop management platform such as SCCM, Dell Case, Semantic Altiris, etc. is being used. The command line interface allows you to manage DeepFreeze on the computers using that third-party desktop management platform via a scripting interface. The key thing to highlight here is that in order to take advantage of that command line interface, we need to ensure that we've set a command line password through the DeepFreeze configuration, as that password is part of the syntax of the script that will be sent to the computers. The next tab over is the Drives tab. On the Drives tab, we can select which drives on a system we want to protect with DeepFreeze, as well as configure any sort of thaw spaces that we might want to create. First and foremost, DeepFreeze only provides the ability to freeze physically attached disks. What that means is that we're not going to be able to freeze or protect network shares, map drives, or anything along those lines. Simply select the drives you want to protect with DeepFreeze, and now we can move over to the Thaw Space feature. What the Thaw Space feature is, is an easy way for DeepFreeze to create a second partition on the system, on the target computers, and that partition will remain unprotected by DeepFreeze. Why would you use a thaw space? Uh, there are several examples of, of why thaw spaces would be handy. First and foremost, if your users have a requirement to save or retain any data on the computers that are protected with DeepFreeze, the thaw space provides a real easy way to provide that area without having to reformat the system and create a partition during that process. To configure a thaw space, we simply select the drive letter that we want the thaw space to have, the size that we want the thaw space to be in either gigabytes or megabytes, the host drive, which will always be the frozen protected drive, as well as whether or not we want that drive to be visible or hidden. Once we've specified all of our desired attributes, we can click the Add button. Now on each deep freeze configuration that we can create, we can create up to eight thaw spaces. Down towards the bottom, we have a few uh, additional options. The most important one being the ability to honor any sort of group policy settings that might be configured in an Active Directory group policy environment that may specify attributes for hidden drives. The next tab over is Workstation Tasks. Within DeepFreeze Enterprise, we can create six different types of workstation tasks. Three of these tasks are more maintenance related tasks and three would be what I would consider more behavior related tasks. The first of the maintenance related tasks is the Windows Update task. Select Windows Update and click the Add button. The Windows Update task provides a real easy way for you to configure an automated Windows Update task on your DeepFreeze computers which will manage the Windows Update process beginning to end. Simply select the day or days that you want the task to run on. In this case, we'll select Wednesday at 9 p.m. Once we set the start time, ensure that you leave the When Windows Update Completes option selected. 
What this will ensure is that on Wednesday evening at 9 p.m., your deep freeze computers that contain this configuration will automatically restart themselves into a thawed state and begin the Windows update process. We will ensure that any and all restarts that need to take place during that process are able to do so. And through monitoring of the Windows update log files, we know when the Windows update process is completed and only at that time will we restart the system back into a frozen state. We have some additional options that can be selected, such as the ability to allow a user to cancel the task if someone happens to be using the system when the task is about to run. The ability to shut down the system after the task rather than restarting it into a frozen state. In addition, by default, we always uh, check the disable keyboard and mouse option. This ensures that users cannot um, manipulate the system while it's thawed or in an unprotected state. Down towards the bottom, we can customize a message that's displayed prior to the task running, as well as one that's displayed while the task is active. Once we've set all of our options, we can click the OK button. We're immediately taken to the Windows Update tab. On the Windows Update tab, we can specify several additional options. Down at the bottom, we can select where we want to retrieve Windows Updates from. By default, we select the public Windows Update website. It's important to note if we're retrieving updates from the public Windows Update website, we will install all critical and security updates as well as service packs. If you have an internal WSUS platform in the environment, you can also point your deep freeze computers to retrieve Windows updates from that platform by specifying the location as well as any target ID that you may have created. Up towards the top, we provide a couple of options related to whether or not we cache Windows updates on the computers. What exactly does caching mean? If we leave the default option selected, which is to not cache Windows updates, what this means is that when that Windows update task triggers, the very first thing we're going to do is retrieve Windows updates. If we select the cache Windows updates, what we'll do is create a proprietary 5 gigabyte thaw space. This thaw space is not assigned a drive letter like the thaw spaces you would create on the drives tab. Into this thaw space, we will retrieve Windows updates as they become available and simply store them there. What this means is that when that Windows update task triggers, instead of first having to retrieve Windows updates, we simply initiate the installation process from that cached area. The next maintenance related task we have is a thawed period. Now what a thawed period allows you to do is place your deep freeze computers into a thawed state or an unprotected state for a specific duration of time. Again, we can select which day or days we want the task to run on, what time we want the, period, the computer to be put into a thawed state, maybe select 10 p.m. this time, and how long we want it to remain in that thawed state. So perhaps until 2 a.m. for a total period of four hours. Now how this thawed task might be um, used is in an environment where you are distributing updates, patches, or software using a third-party tool. If you know that at 10 p.m. on Monday till 2 a.m. on Tuesday, you distribute patches and updates, third-party updates, something along those lines, you can simply align uh, your thawed period task on Deep Freeze with that maintenance uh, event within the environment, and this will ensure that your Deep Freeze computers are in a state that will allow that software to be added, allow patches to be applied. The third maintenance related task we have is a batch file task. The batch file task is handy if you need to execute a batch file to perform a, a specific task uh, on a system that has deep freeze installed on it. Again, we specify the name, when we want that task to run, what time we want it to begin at, and what time we want it to end at. What this will do, restart the system into a thawed state at 9 p.m. and run a batch file. That batch file can be created on the batch file tab. We can also import an existing batch file that may already be created. On the left side, we can specify the credentials that we want that batch file to execute under. So that covers the three maintenance related tasks that we have. We also provide three more behavior related tasks. We have a restart task, a shutdown task, and an idle time task. The restart and shutdown tasks are identical, with the exception, of course, that one will restart a system, one will shut the system down. For the shutdown task, as an example, if you wanted to ensure that all your computers were turned off uh, on a, a daily at 6 p.m., simply leave the daily option selected, 
set 6 p.m. as your shutdown time, and at 6 p.m. each and every night, Deep Freeze will shut your computers down. Finally, the idle time task is very handy in an environment where you have multiple users, perhaps public access systems. What the idle time task will do is either restart or shut down a system based on a period of keyboard and mouse inactivity. Why is this handy? Well, again, in a public access environment or a multi-user environment, we want to be able to restart these systems as frequently as we can to ensure that each and every user is working within a clean and pristine environment. The restart if idle task allows you to simply say, if the keyboard and mouse haven't been touched as an example for 45 minutes on this computer, let's take advantage of that opportunity to restart the system and provide a clean environment for the next user who might want to use that computer. Finally, the advanced option tab allows us to specify the location of our management console. The default selection is LAN. LAN uses simple network broadcasting. More than sufficient if you're managing a, a small number of computers all on the same network segment. We generally recommend you specify LAN when and provide either the console IP address or the console name of, uh, of the system that the enterprise console is installed on. This is where the computers will report to when they start up. Over towards the right side, we've got one option that's maybe of particular interest, and that is the option to restart systems if a user logs off. Once we've specified all of our options, and I will just put the IP address in here, we can click on OK, and we'll be prompted to save this configuration. Click on OK, and we'll see over to the right side under the list of available configurations that my new tasks configuration is now available. Now in order to apply this configuration to a computer that's already has Deep Freeze installed, we can do one of two things. I can either right click on that computer, select update configuration, and select the configuration from the list of available configurations, or I can simply drag that computer onto the configuration I want to apply to it. We'll get confirmation that the configuration has been successfully updated, and we'll also see beside that computer under the configuration that the tasks configuration we just configured is now uh, installed and uh, is located on that system.